WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming live audio, RTC Channel 5, and some video on RTC Channel 4. On your smartphone device, you can download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going. Nice day going on outside, 50 degrees and sunshine. Going to be a great day to go out to the Woodlawn Hospital Pond and do a little fishing, right, John? It's official. Uh, spring is here. The fountain was put in yesterday, so uh, <laughs> it's official. Spring's here. Outstanding, and uh, a lot of fishermen around the area. We're, there. We're having quite a few folks that. out there, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and they actually catch fish. So that's mm -hmm. uh, I've I've kind of staked out a spot uh, this this <laughs> summer. Uh, my oldest grandson, he'll be uh, four. Okay. I think it's time taking fishing. So I'm trying to find a spot where I can take him and actually catch something and. Uh, so we can get that out of the way. So I've, I've got a spot. I, I've been watching where everybody's been going. I think I know the secret. Honey hole for the small bluegill. All right. You brought a special guest with you today. I have Brad Rogers with me today. Later on, kind of want to discuss okay. uh, one of the things that we've been looking at. It's a state initiative that uh, both the governor and the Indiana State Board of Health has said there's three items in the state of Indiana we want to concentrate on because that's our greatest health care issues. Uh, smoking sensation is one. Obesity. And the other thing is infant mortality. Uh, that's a fairly big issue. Now, we don't experience that here so much, but we are going to start looking at uh, working on some of the uh, obesity and smoking sensation. So Brad's kind of okay. heading up. Uh, I put kind of a task force together of folks at the hospital. Brad got the short straw. Uh, he's the one who had to come today and, and talk about it. So, uh, Kind of ironically, though, they're, they're wellness issues as opposed to sickness issues. Correct, and that's what we're looking at. You know, again, we're probably one of the only industries out there that our long-term goal is to put ourselves out of business, and wellness is one of those things. But it just makes sense that if we can take away some of those unhealthy lifestyles, you're going to live longer, you're going to feel better, and, uh, you know, we... We like seeing you, but we'd like to see you healthy, too. So exactly. uh, that's part of that program. So I think Brad's got some information we'll okay. be sharing here in a little bit uh, of where we want to go with that program, what we want to offer to the community. Board of Trustees in session Monday, right? Monday, yes. Mm -hmm. We had to move it up a day. We had a couple conflicts. Uh, we had Blue & Company came in to do our 2014 audit. And uh, once again, we received a clean audit from them, which means that there was, you know, we're doing, our go we're doing a good job. Doing a Nothing good job. going on there. Um, you know, there were just... Uh, a few things that they bring out each year and it, they have some benchmarks where they look at hospitals our size in the state of Indiana, critical access hospitals, and then they have a four state area also. And so there was a couple areas there they said, you know, you guys need to work on it. And days cash on hand was one of ours. Okay. You know, we're running in 35 to 50 days at fluctuates in there. We need to be in that 80 to 100 day range. So that's going to be one of our big things we want to focus on 2015, building cash. We okay. just got to start building up a little bit. Other than that, uh, a lot of other items, we were uh, you know, in the leader of the pack, so to speak, when we look at those benchmarks. So very pleased with what we did uh, in 2014. You know, we had such a horrendous first quarter, actually first four months. Uh, I was pleased we wound up with a very small loss for the year. Considering we were about $2.2 .2 million in the hole at the end of April, I think we lost, uh, with the audit, at about 140, 150,000 for the year. Still a, a red number, but it could have been much worse. So uh, very pleased that we were able to recover quite a bit of that. It was a pretty deep hole to try to dig out of for 2014. Tough one. Uh, we got into that weather-wise, really kicked us, kicked yes, us off. Yes, it, it just absolutely devastated us uh, that first uh, four months of the year. So this year's been much better. Our first four months has been better. Uh, we actually had projected, I think, uh, to lose around 500000 our first four months, and we've only lost 300000 So okay. we're... You know, it's kind of hard for me to go to the board and say, we've had a good month, we're still in the red, but it's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, they, they don't understand my optimism when I look at things like that. But, uh, you know, we are ahead of budget for where we exactly. thought we'd be at this time of the year. Getting into the March financials, uh, we had gross revenue about $10.3 million, uh, wrote off $6.2 million, which is our contractuals, left some operating revenue of $4.1 million, had about $4.1 million in expenses, so we actually had an eighty-three thousand dollar profit for the months of uh, month of March. Okay. Uh, again, I look back a year ago at this time. Uh, that was far better than what we did a year ago. So, financials uh, we're doing okay on schedule for we uh, anticipate this year get us back into the black at the end of the year. But again, it's such a variable industry that we're in. We never know who's going to be sick and how sick they're going to be. So it's hard for us to really predict that. I can do a real good job on our expenses and hold the line there. It's just the revenue is the hard one for us to predict. Sure. The other thing that we uh, was very happy to receive, learned the first of the week, that 
Uh, we've been doing is called HCAPS, which is a, a, a survey that CMS or Medicare does of all of our inpatient patients. Uh, it's about a 35 minute phone interview conducted by an independent third party, so we have no hands on into it, and they rank us based upon those results that we get, uh, you know, one through five star, with five star being the best you can get. We were notified first week that uh, we did receive a five star rating from Excellent. CMS for quality. We're one of 10 hospitals in the state of Indiana to receive that uh, five star rating. And of the 3,500 hospitals across the country, only 251 received a five-star rating. So very proud of that staff has uh, done an excellent job of, you know, working on that quality. And that's, that's what it does. And it's feedback from our patients telling CMS, yes, we did receive, you know, perceived quality when they were there. So, you know, now the bar has been set. Uh, can we continue to do that? So it's going to be a difficult uh, task to try to, you know, keep that five-star rating. But, boy, you know, for our first you know, go at it. Uh, very proud that we were able to establish that and get that five star That's rating. Excellent, excellent. And uh, other than that, that was pretty well the board meeting. Uh, before I turn it over to Brad, do want to remind everybody that we have our community health fair will be on Saturday, May 16th, from 6:30 to 10 uh, in the classrooms in the East Wing. And a whole list of things uh, we've done this every year, and it seems to grow every year. We have better and better participation. And there's a lot of wellness screens where you can come out and, uh, you know, for low cost, no cost, get some of the, those indicators. And, you know, two or three years ago, we had an individual go through that program, had an abnormal result on their test, and basically it saved their life. Exactly uh, right. Had a problem they didn't know they had, and uh, this free health screening did find that. So absolutely encourage folks, if you can, come out Saturday, May 16th, 6.30 to 10 in the classroom. Get some of those screens. You just, it's better to be safe than sorry. A lot of the things, if we catch it early enough, you can recover from it. And uh, we have a very good success story because we did catch it early on this one individual. And, uh, you know, they're having a ball now, whereas it could have been a much more dramatic outcome had they not caught this. Probably should look into some of those ahead of time because some of them require fasting, right? They do. If okay. you're going to do some of the lab works, uh, you know, probably, you know, come in uh, fast, uh, you know, nothing to eat or drink after midnight. And I think they'll probably have some snacks there. So once you get your lab work done, get you a little bit of something to eat okay. and go through the rest of the, the displays there that we're going to have. So uh, should be something coming out in the newspaper here, a, a full uh, listing of what the displays are, what the screens are going to be, and uh, what the, those times and costs are. But again, highly encouraged, come out and get some of those health screens just to make sure everything's going how you, we want it to go for you. And of course, be listening because we'll put some of those on the radio as well. Absolutely. That was pretty well the board meeting. Okay. Uh, again, at this point, kind of like turn over to Brad because we are, you know, really happy to be able to kick off some community programs that are going to be no cost to the community uh, that they can come out and participate in to try to give you a healthier lifestyle. So at this point, kind of, kind of turn over okay. to Brad. He, he'll, somebody knows what they're talking about <laughs> on it instead of me. We'll, Brad, we'll see about that. One. Pretty exciting what you're doing. <clears throat> yeah, it is really exciting. Um, you know, uh, as part of that committee. Um, for our new program, um, very interesting. We were able to pull a large group of people together throughout the hospital with varying backgrounds and um, come up with um, the beginning of what I think is going to be a really good thing for the community and for Woodlawn Hospital. Okay. Um, it's called Well Aware. Uh, our uh, director of cardiopulmonary, Rick Dennis, came up with that nice little catchphrase. But uh, Well Aware to us at Woodlawn Hospital is our ongoing uh, efforts to improve the quality of education to the community when it has to do with health related items um, and with that same kind of initiative um, as the governor and uh, the state uh, department of health uh, dr van ness um, infant mortality rates obesity rates and smoking or tobacco cessation rates um, those are all things that we are going to really focus on um, Indiana typically rates from national health rankings 41st as least healthy out of 51 if you include the District of Columbia. So yeah, we don't fare very well in those. Uh, we surveys. really <laughs> don't. No. And, and you know when you really look at it, this kind of started out from infant mortality, but it kind of spawned into uh, the obesity and, and the smoking as well because they're so intricately related to that. Um, it, it's pretty interesting. We. We really work hard, but we haven't really had that great of results. Um, you know, there's budgetary things that have happened in Congress and, and the local uh, and state governments that have reduced some of those educational costs and things like that over the last few years. 
Um, they've reduced the amount of money from $8 million to $5 million last year alone in education for smoking cessation throughout the state. That doesn't help you either, does it? It's, it's really difficult. So um, as much as I painfully hate to say this next line, we have uh, gratefully got the assistance of the local Purdue Extension. And I only say that because I'm a three-time IU grad. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the Purdue Extension uh, office has been just phenomenal. Uh, Jason C., our chaplain at the hospital, contacted them. We've met with them uh, um, once and, and had several emails back and forth. And we've set up a really a nice listing of classes that'll start beginning sometime in May second week, third week of May, and um, got nearly a year's worth of courses. And, and these courses um, really involve all three of these gamuts. Um, we have classes for dining with diabetes. We have classes for smoking cessation. Uh, we have a lot of prenatal classes. Um, we have heart healthy classes, healthy baby courses. Um, let's see here, small steps to health. Some of these classes are one and two sessions. Some of them are a month or two. Some of them are 10 weeks long. Um, so a wide variety of classes all offered through the extension. Um, we're also partnering with um, the uh, Fulton County Mental Health and Mental okay. Health Awareness um, and Fort County Counseling. We're gonna be doing some classes through them. Um, we're gonna be doing some classes through some of the uh, chaplain areas um, for just healthy families. Um, we're, we're kind of trying to pull in, and, and if I haven't called you yet here in the community, leaders of the businesses and local uh, agencies, we will be. Um, we want to use the education that's out there and partner with you guys to provide ongoing things at the hospital. Um, we're going to start out with focusing on the community, and, and we're going to end up opening up to our own employees and, and, and other agencies and other companies. We can go to them and help with that. But uh, Purdue's been wonderful. Wonderful helping us out. Brad, you go back as you start these things and take a look at, let's say, smoking cessation or let's say obesity and ask yourself the question, why do so many people in Indiana smoke and why are so many people in Indiana overweight? It really is. It's a tough thing because we have climates that are both north of us and south of us, you know, geographically that have different rates of obesity and smoking. Um, which don't follow that predictable thought process of maybe, you know, it's cold in the winter, they can't get out, they can't be as active. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. It really is. It's a tough, it's a tough thought. And, and we've got, you know, Indiana University, Purdue University, State Department of Health, uh, they're all constantly looking into that to try to find those links. Um, it, it's a, it's a multifactorial type thing that's really really eluding a lot of people right now. I think it's smoking, in terms of smoking cessation, getting to the youth would be the first step. Correct. And it, the problem we have there is, you know, it's so prevalent here that we can do a lot of talking with the kids in the school system saying, you can't do this, you can't do this. And they go home and mom and dad are both smoking. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of, well, if they're doing it, why, why, how can it be that bad? And then the, the whole issue of the secondhand smoke, you know, we're starting to see that as almost as bad as direct smoking itself. So. We've got to, you know, kind of nip it in the bud, and I think it's got to start with the parents. Say, you know, I've got to stop doing this because it is unhealthy, and, and it's it's hard to break that lifestyle. You know, a lot of these have started off as kids, and they say, "Well, I've been smoking for 30 years, and I'm I'm <coughs> as healthy as I can be." Uh, you know, we've got to break that that type of lifestyle and, and really have them look and say, "Here's what it's doing." You know, here's what smoking's doing, and then you know, the obesity is the other thing. I think it's just. We, as a society, we've become into the, the fast food. It's quick for us to stop and get to fast food. And that's not the healthiest food probably for us, but it's the easiest, it's the most convenient because you know we've got, I gotta pick the kids up at school, then I gotta take them to soccer, I gotta take them to softball, I gotta take them to this, what's my quick meal? So we'll just go through the drive through So it's, it's a lifestyle change, and we all know changing lifestyles is the hardest thing for us to change because we're comfortable in that, that zone that we're in. So that's what a lot of these classes are gonna be is working on that lifestyle changing and, and you've gotta make a commitment and we know going in, it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody could do it. So how do you motivate these people to say, you know, take one step at a time. You know, if somebody is obese and smoking, you're not gonna fix both of those. Pick one and work on it and then move to the second one because it's gonna overload them. So it's, uh, you know, it's just, we have so many resources in the community that it was kind of nice when we started looking at this, 
what is out there, but it's all been kind of disjointed. Everybody's been trying to do this independently. So what we're trying to do is pull all those resources together to one central point and let us all work on it together instead of having nine people coming at it. Let's have one concentrated effort and that we just feel that might work a little better that we now have a unified front that we're working to get this education out to the folks and try to do some lifestyle changes. Brad, is there a link between obesity and diabetes? Oh, absolutely. Um, link between obesity and diabetes, link between uh, diabetes and, and heart health, uh, you know, high sugar content over long periods of time. If you, you check and speak with physicians and, and check the uh, articles, you'll see that there's a higher rate of high cholesterol and, and things like that. So they have a much higher risk of developing those other factors and those other things. So there's no question there. For the classes that you're going to be offering, will there be a charge for those? Uh, currently, all the classes we've got planned are uh, free of charge. Excellent. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, people will want to know that. That's one of the commitments. Is, you know, right. We've got to have some skin in this game as a, as a health care provider. And uh, so we made a conscious decision that, you know, if I tell you you've got to pay to do this, you might not come. <laughs> you know, let's offer it free. And, and then, but conversely, some folks say, well, if you offer free, I've got no incentive because if I've paid for it, I'm more likely to do it. But right now, our plan is these will be free of charge. We want you to come out. We want to get you into those healthy lifestyles. And if it's, you know, are we going to have somebody there smoking five packs a day? Can we get them down to one? That makes a difference. And eventually maybe get them off. So it's, it's, we know it's going to be small incremental steps we're going to make. And we're not going to change stuff in one or two months. This is going to be a progress a program that I think we're going to have to say this is a three, four, five year process to get people to change those lifestyles. Because once you can change the adults, then we see the kids will see, well, mom and dad's not doing that, right. I don't need to do it. So we're hoping that it's got to trickle down as we look long term, that what we're doing today will make a difference maybe with some of our kids 10, 15 years from now. Going to be very goal oriented classes, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're going to be very specific, kind of, uh, here's what we're going to do during this four week or this 10 weeks, here's the information we want to get out. But the other thing about Well Aware program is that, you know, as it is, we are well aware that it's going to constantly change. Um, part of the idea is that we want to start this program with the idea that over the years we're going to continue to pull in new classes and new resources as the community needs. As we see new needs, new problems in the community, uh, new resources available. You know, uh, as Purdue, you know, they constantly are adding courses for community education. Yeah, it, it's really baffling how many they have. It's, we went through the list and I, I, you know, there's 30, 40 courses right now in this community or in the local communities around that they can pull from and bring in very well-trained educators to help us in this community. And I just don't think we've all tapped into that and brought together all of the resources and partnered the way that we really could to benefit um, the community. It's also a resource for physicians. Uh, I spoke with our OBGYN and, and he's extremely excited about the idea that we're going to have courses for uh, um, mothers expecting, for families expecting, um, how to help and, and work with those children afterwards, and just those links to a bigger network of education that we can use for those, those people. Uh, it's pretty exciting stuff for us. Are we able to take Fulton County and compare it with the other counties in the state of Indiana in terms of the things that we're talking about this morning? I think eventually we're going to get there. This okay. is a fairly new initiative. Uh, it, basically, I think it was February, I came back from a conference in Indy, and it was kind of kicked off there by the Indiana State Board of Health saying, here's our 2015 initiatives, here's what we want. The governor was on board saying, here's what I want. So I think everybody is trying to, to get into this and start that. So to say where are we at statewide in comparison, I don't have that answer right now, but I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I'd like for us to be kind of on the leading edge of that. It's, I haven't heard many of my colleagues talking about these type of programs yet. And lots of times as a healthcare you know, provider, we get jaded because every year there's the, the new, you know, flavor of the day of what we want to do, what we want to do. But this one just made sense. When you start looking at what we experience here, what we see here, this program, this initiative makes sense for us to do something. So that's why we, I kind of came back and, uh, you know, a lot of times you come back from the seminar and you, you get all this stuff and nothing's really exciting. This is probably one of the few ones I came back and said, guys, we've got to do this. You know, this is something we've got to get in place. Let's get it going. And the staff, uh, they just jumped on board and said, yeah, I want to be part of it. I want to be on that development to see where we're going with this. So it's, uh, I think we're probably leading edge a little bit on this. And I'm hoping that every hospital in the state does something. 
It's for their community, it's for their community's benefit. We've got to get together and get this education out there. I remember too when Governor Daniels was in office, uh, one of his priorities was the health of Hoosiers and statewide health. And I, and I think towards the end, as we talked with him, he was a little disappointed in how all of that worked out. But it sounds like this is a better plan in terms of how we can go about it, how we can go about it with our local communities, start there and work up. Yeah, I think that's the key. If you try to say it's a statewide and you try to mandate it top down, it's not going to work. It has to be a grassroots effort where we get buy-in locally so we get you know Fulton County and now we other counties start seeing this hopefully it'll grow from the bottom up because if you try to dictate it from the top down you know Hoosiers are fairly stubborn and you know I, I had a, a one person tell me one time says you know how the easiest way to get me to the center of the room is to push me to a corner so yeah Hoosiers are like that so I think we have to have that grassroots where it comes from within to try and dictate here's what you have to do and I think we'll have better buy-in. Brad what else would you like to pass along in terms of well aware? Uh, a couple of kind of main things. Uh, well aware, we will be having a link uh, through our uh, Woodlawn Hospital webpage coming up shortly. Uh, we're going to finalize the schedule of classes with the Purdue Extension Office. Um, they have a new employee out there, new community uh, wellness coordinator, Elizabeth Hines, who I'm eagerly excited to uh, hopefully get together with and meet this next week and um, finalize all those courses. So there'll be a nice link for everyone to get on and, and check that out. Um, the other thing is that, you know, if you are an agency or you are a, a business leader or a, um, someone who, who has an idea of, of classes or, or a need in the community, you know, give us a call at the hospital. Um, those kinds of things are, are extremely important to us as we design these classes. Uh, we don't want to kind of reinvent the wheel or beat a dead horse. We want to make sure that what we're providing is what you need in a, in a way that you'll be able to utilize it. So uh, give us a call. We'll, we'll take all that into account. Okay. Finally, John, May board meeting, anything in particular that might be cropping up at that time? I think at that point we will have a, a capital equipment uh, request coming in. We've been looking at some new uh, uh, surgery equipment and it's been a fairly long drawn out process. It's one of the requirements I do is when we do these type of projects is I want to make sure every piece of equipment from the various vendors are equal so we're not getting differences. And I told all the vendors, you know, just quote on what we put in our RFP. Well, once we got them all in, it's taken us about three weeks to pull out the fluff. Uh, every one of them had things in there that was not in that RFP. So I think we're to the point now. I was wanting to go to the board meeting, you know, uh, this week, but just wasn't ready. So I think we finally got everything pared down, so we're doing an equal comparison. And the surgeons are excited because there's some new technology and some of the scopes that they use in the surgery. Uh, you know, much better uh, high def images that they'll have. So they're anxious to get this going. So hopefully we'll have that for the next board meeting and get that approved so we can get that in process and have some really nice uh, scope equipment for our surgeons coming in here by mid-year. Wonderful world of technology, right? It is. It's, uh, it's amazing. One of them that we looked at actually uh, was a 3D. So a surgeon could put on a pair of glasses and it, uh, it was kind of, we watched a video and it, <laughs> it was scary how realistic this thing was in 3D you know, the, how that camera works. So, uh, But it's yeah. good the Woodlawn is on the cutting edge, basically. You yeah, know? We're, we try to make sure what we're doing fits the needs of this community. I, we, we don't have a ton of resources, as we talked about earlier, on days cash on hand. So if we're going to make a move in something, it's got to be something that's going to benefit the community. So that's what we're looking to. You know, the, we have a new MRI that's hopefully be in by mid-year. And again, it's uh, we've heard some folks not real happy with the one we had because it was a little tight bore in it and a little, you know, if you had some claustrophobic issues, it was a little tight. So we've gone with a, a what's called a wide bore, short bore. So there's still a, a small tube you go in, but it's much wider and a lot shorter. So ease some of that anxiety you might have. And, and one of the best things about it is it has the new quiet technology. So, I, you know, those who've been in an MRI, it's, you know, it's like being at a trash compact or somewhere. <laughs> They're very noisy. Part of the scans now will be virtually quiet. There'll be no noise. So uh, again, I think we'll be about the second or third hospital maybe in the state of Indiana with that technology. Excellent. Everybody else will be moving to it, but you know, it's one of those, it's available. We're getting it for the, basically uh, we lease that equipment. We don't own it. The lease rate's going to be the same on the new as what was on the old. From a cash perspective, I'm, I'm being held whole there. So it makes sense to move up to that new technology and, and just make it a little more pleasant for those folks who have to have MRIs. John Alley, Brad Rogers from Woodlawn Hospital. We appreciate your time today. By the way, thank I'm you. always amiss or remiss if I don't thank Scott Sager from RTC for being here as well. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Keep up the good work at Woodlawn Hospital. Thank you. Thanks for job. having us.